In this video, I'm going to attempt to demystify the make.com aggregator and iterator flow control modules. I will show you how the array aggregator combines data from a Google Sheet into a single bundle. And I will show you how the array iterator does the opposite and converts data into a series of bundles from an existing array. And lastly, I'll show you how to deduplicate data using the array iterator. Stay tuned to learn how these very powerful modules work. But first, my name is Andy O'Neill, and I help entrepreneurs like you add time-saving automation to their business. If you need help with Make.com building your scenarios for your business, hit the link right here, and you can go over and book some time with myself or a member of my team. All right, so let's jump over here to my Google Sheet, and you see I've got Got 10 rows of data here plus a header row and you'll notice I have some highlighted rows those are actually duplicate rows and we're going to deal with those later when we do de deduplicate this data but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a search in make for this data so we can turn it into an array but first I have to sign in to make and if you don't have a make plan yet check out the description below and if you use that link you will get a free month of the core plan when you sign up. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to run my Google Sheets module and that's going to retrieve this data right here and bring it over into make.com. So I'm just going to right click and run this module only and you'll see we get 10 bundles here which again we have 10 rows of data. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an array aggregator and I'm going to connect that right there. And you'll see that this has a gray box around it or gray outline around it. And the reason is this is looking for that Google Sheets module to aggregate the data. Now, in more complex scenarios, you might have to do a little trial and error on which module to look at. You might have to look back at your trigger to get this the array created correctly. But just keep in mind, you may have to play around with what module this is looking at to get the array that you want to get. So our array aggregator has a list here of different things we can uh, choose from this Google Sheet. I'm going to do bundle order position and row number. We have the spreadsheet ID. I don't really want that or the sheet. And then I want my order ID, tracking number and product ID. You can see come from here. But these other values, the bundle order position and the row number, actually come from our Google Sheet. That's data generated from our Google Sheet. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to save anyway. I'm going to say ignore warnings because uh, Make doesn't like it when you end with an array aggregator because that's designed to be used for something else. And as you can see here, we have 10 bundles that came out of our search but we have only one bundle in our array aggregator. And you can see here are each of the bundles coming from our Google Sheet. So this first one is 1000. Uh, this is item number from row two. That's right here, okay? So that is pulled each of those bundles in. Right down here in our output, we have an array that has 10 collections, right? That's what we get here from this array aggregator. So right here's our array with 10 items that came from our Google Sheet. So that is how the array aggregator works. It takes multiple items and puts them into a single bundle that can be used elsewhere in our scenario. Okay, so next we're going to look at the iterator, and that's going to be this module right up here on top. What I've done is I've simply mapped the array we created over here in module two. Just to recap, what we've done is we've taken 10 bundles from our Google Sheet. We have created a single array with those 10 collections of data. As you can see, if I open it up here, order ID, tracking number, product ID, bundle order position, and row number two. Those are all in a single bundle. So we can do a lot of different things with that. But what we're going to do right now is we're just going to unravel that and turn it back into 10 bundles. And so we're going to do that with our iterator. And I'm going to turn this bottom one off here. So we're going to do this with our iterator. So we have 10 bundles that were turned into one. Our iterator is going to split those back out into 10. So I'm going to run this. All right. So it used one operation, but we have 
10 bundles, which is the 10 bundles we started with over in Google Sheets. Now, I will say this is not a typical use case where you would aggregate the data and turn around and iterate it. I have done that in some use cases where I needed to format the data in a certain way, but this is just showing you how these work and laying the groundwork for understanding how an array aggregator and an iterator work. So basically we have, we ended up with the same data we started with. Here are our 10 bundles. Now, one thing that a iterator is really good at is deduplicating data. And that's kind of a hard thing to do and make. So this is one way we can do that. And in this use case, we would aggregate the array of data and then iterate it to deduplicate it. So let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to enable this route. So right over here, we have a function that says deduplicate. And so if you hover over this, the only thing you really have to do with this function is put an array inside of the parentheses. And this is going to remove any duplicates from our array. Now, if I go back and look at our Google Sheet, you'll notice these top two lines are highlighted and these bottom two lines are highlighted. Those are duplicates. So we have 10 rows of data, but two are duplicates. So when we do deduplicate this data, we will end up with eight bundles of data. So let's go back to our scenario and we're going to look at our iterator here with the deduplication function in there. I'm going to right click and disable that route. So let's run this. So I've run this and let's look at our deduplication. Now you'll notice we have 10 bundles here. And honestly, I was stumped for a little bit while making this video of what happened. What happened here is I included the bundle order position and row number which makes each one of these collections unique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over here to my array aggregator and I'm going to uncheck bundle order position and row number. I'm only going to bring through my order ID, tracking number and product ID. That should make these bundles unique as a whole and deduplicate them. So if you're trying to deduplicate and it doesn't look like it's working, you may look at some other data around it that's making each one of those unique. So I'm going to hit OK. And again, our deduplicate had 10 bundles, but now it should have eight bundles. So I'm going to save. And let's run this. And let's look here. Now we have eight bundles because now our collections are unique. So you can see we have um, the order ID, the tracking number and the product ID. Now, don't be confused. The bundle order position and total number of bundles that's for our array that did not come from our Google Sheet. So that was generated by this module. Now we have a unique set of data that we can use in our scenario. And what happened is it ignored this line here and this line here, which turned our 10 bundles of data into eight unique bundles of data. And if you'd like to see how I use the text aggregator, check out this video to see how to create HTML tables with Make using the text aggregator Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.